welcome to This Racing Life, where we are at Sunhill Farm, the new home of trainer Patrick Neville. This week, we visit three North Yorkshire-based trainers who have live chances at this season's Cheltenham Festival. First up, we're off to Patrick Neville, who has built an exciting stable of young horses just a year after moving over from Ireland. He explains just why he decided to take the plunge. I was training in Ireland for, for a good few years, 17 years I think in total. And probably for the last five or six I was struggling, uh, getting an odd result here and there, but uh, we decided then there was that I travelled over to the UK with a few horses from Ireland and uh, we had a bit of success and uh, I s probably between the cost of travelling and what was taken out of the horses I decided that I'd stay in the UK and s give it a go and uh, I leased the yard and uh, it just went from there. I guess it wasn't an easy decision for a, don't take this the wrong way. Yeah, I won't. <laughs> but for a, you know, a, yeah. a, 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 you know, a trainer that's been training for some time yeah. in sort of a, you know, a, a, yeah, a, an experienced was, part of life to suddenly up six and move is quite a big, yeah. quite a, quite a surprising sure thing. It was a massive, massive move, yeah. Change, but I was, I was gone to, I was, like, I heard one time a, a fellow told me the definition of madness is keep doing the same thing mm. over and over and getting the same results. So I said. I'm going to have one go, give it a go, and if it works, it works, and if not, I can always go back. And, it, and look, it, it, it's worked, hasn't it? So just yeah. so everyone, everyone's you know, fully aware that you were sending out winners o over the summer and, yeah. and it, you know, back into last season, um, they were running in Anne Duffield's name because of where you were here, you didn't have your licence through, but you, yeah. you pretty much hit the ground running, right? It's been, yeah. it's been a success story. Yeah, I think our first four or five runners were winners, so um, we... We built on that. We, we, we got a couple of lovely owners that invested on me and invested in the yard and, and uh, backed me. So it was it's probably easier when you get the nice horses, you know, that you can uh, compete in the, in the better races. Mm. Can you imagine if you were sat here now still waiting on the first winner? Or, do you know what I mean? It was, it's yeah. quite a risk. It must have been yeah. the fact that you hit the ground running must have been a. Yeah. Right, well, as you say, I'm, I'm around a while. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I kind of half know what I'm doing. Have you got a better quality of horse now than you did back home, uh, do you think? Or... Yeah, I, I could say that I have, yeah. Ha uh, how's that come about? Uh, met, met good owners, owners okay. that invested good money, uh, bought that nice type of horse that we could buy, mm. uh, where before I couldn't afford that horse. Uh, you were buying a, a young store horse, but like you could be three years waiting mm. for him. Where meeting the better owners that invested, you could buy the horse coming from the Irish pint to pint or something, do you know? Mm. So. But you had to be an attractive proposition for owners as well. Do you know what I mean? It works both ways. Yeah. So it's, it's nice that people have looked at you and gone, okay, yeah. you know, established Irish trainer comes yeah. over here, sets up. I, I want to be part of that. Yeah. I mean, that must, that must be quite a nice feeling. I'm easy enough get on with. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, you yeah. are, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I think it's interesting, you're here in your riding out gear. Yeah. Like, you're riding out every day. You're sitting yeah. on the horses. I love, I just love it. Uh, I love it probably, uh, yeah, I still love riding out. Mm. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you ride the real whacker out most days? Every day. Two from two over fences at Presbury Park. The next stop for the real whacker will be the Cheltenham Festival. He's even been given a Gold Cup entry. Let's hear from the people that know him best. I mean, we've all been involved in horses for years and years, and it's so hard to get a good one. Yeah. And uh, I suppose, I, I won't say disappointment, but we've been involved in so many horses throughout the years, and uh, you might get a winner if you're lucky and you mm. don't get no more. But like to come along, and uh, I think like we had him for maybe a year, year and a half before he reached the track, but to have a one that has come on so much in the last year and a half mm. and that has improved all the way he comes, he came along. I think he's had three wins in, and a second in the last 14 months. It is unbelievable. Mm. It's like a dream come true, really. And it, you know, it must be lovely for you 
to be doing it with Paddy, who's, I mean, you go back a, a oh, good way, don't you? 40 years, I'd say. I could say I grew up with Paddy, but pa I, I grew up a little before Paddy. But uh, uh, we come back from a place called Ballysteen in Limerick in Ireland, yeah. and uh, we both grew up there as, as young lads, since it's just a small village. So what, what did you think when he said, I'm going to go to England? Uh, well, you see, Paddy didn't say to me he was going to England. The truth is, Paddy rang me two weeks after he went to England and told me he was going to England. And I said, what did you do, what, what did you do with my horse to real whacker? And he says, he's over here with me. <laughs> so I goes, he said, you'll enjoy it. You love coming, you love traveling, you love coming over, he said to me. So actually, I goes, you're probably right, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> is it good job you trust him then? Ah, but I have to trust him. You'd always trust a neighbor's child. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, you know, he's done a remarkable job with him. He's he? done he a remarkable job. He rides him out every day. He rides him out himself every day. He minds him, he's brought him to uh, a, a standard, and he has brought him to, a, what should I say, a league that's beyond anyone's expectations. Mm -hmm. And I, like, I think in an interview, Paddy said at one stage that if he was in a bigger stable, he might get lost, you know, but he's in a stable that he gets massive attention, and I think it works. Does that give you an edge, you think, that you ride him? Yeah, I, I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, it does, yeah. No, he's, he, he, he's, you know when he's in good form. I knew that uh, going into the race the last day that he had improved from his first run uh, on, on his work, you know. So how do you know that? Just give that feel. You give that feel. It's, it's just, I know you have uh, lads right now from me, young lads there, I'd always turn around to them there and turn around, well, did he give you a feel? They don't understand some of them, what I mean, but I know by riding them myself that uh, they either give you a feel or not. In a piece of work, you can... Well, in a piece of work or, or yeah, or ornery canter or whatever, yeah. You will just know? Yeah. And you knew going into the dipper? Well, yeah. I knew, yeah, he'd strengthened up a lot from his run and he was a lot sharper and we, we worked him in a piece of work. He kind of half frightened me, to be honest. Uh, so, well, he didn't fright, frighten me in a good way, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I knew he'd improved... Uh, Good bit, yeah. So, all right, take me through the dipper then. He, I mean, he just uh, dominated. He did, yeah. We, we, we decided, I'll tell you, first time over fences, we went to first day and, and Gavin, Gavin Sheehan rode him. Gavin and myself get on great. He knows all the horses. He's very, very positive. Mm. And uh, I like the way he rides them. He's positive and he's, a lot of the horses I run, they'd be front runners. And uh, he made the running on the first day over fences. And uh, sure, he, he was only getting into at the end. He was only so. He, he sorry, he made the running because you wanted to, because Gavin thought that was the best thing for him. Well, we we said, I said, I had him well schooled over fences. Uh, he was always going to be a better chaser than a than a hurdler. So we we there was five in the race on the first day, and there was two that had experience over fences, mm. and. We we said we'd let him roll, and and not to be holding him up, you know. Let him use his jumping, and that's what he got into rhythm. And and then the second day, we said they were, we were a little bit worried about the trip, that we were taking on a Grade One horse, a uh, couple of other horses that had had the bit of speed where we'd have stamina. And so we decided we'd make it a good test and, and use his jumping. So Sam, Sam done exactly that. And that's, it worked out great, yeah. I spoke to Sam Tristan Davis before the, in, in the parade ring before the race, and Sam seemed to be very confident with him. And Paddy was confident. And um, Sam said he had spoken to Gavin Sheehan earlier on that morning and that uh, they all thought he was great. But I mean, I just looked at what he was up again, mm. which was like uh, Paul Nicholson, Nicky Henderson, um, you know, grade one winners. Mm. And I just couldn't see it happening. Mm. But I mean, the whacker is the whacker. <laughs> and he laid from the front and you, they, he decided they weren't going to catch him. And that's the way it went, thank God. When he jumped the last, you must have been. I, I, had my, I was in the center of the parade ring and I wasn't even speaking. And uh, I wasn't shouting or roaring or anything. And I just see him jump in the last, and I thought at any stage that Paul Nicholson boom, was going to catch him. But then I see him pulling away again, and I said, you know, he's not. I started roaring. <laughs> so then they knew who wanted the horse. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the buzz like with, with all of you? Was it just uh, sure, one it was of the unreal. 
it was just one of those dreams come true. I mean, is this after happening? Like, am I after having another winner in Cheltenham? Uh, one of the most famous uh, national hunt tracks in the world, like, you mm -hmm. know, and it was just, words wouldn't describe the buzz. Why are you not likely to run him again until the festival? Uh, he's a big light frame of a horse and I just don't want to over race him. And, and uh, he's, he's just a big light frame of a horse. Uh, you just want to tip away with him this year, you know? Mm. And uh, I think if he, we'll go straight to Cheltenham with him. Okay. Why does like he have a Gold Cup entry? I just, we just, uh, and uh, he won on the Sunday and the, the entries closed on the Tuesday, I think, the following Tuesday, so, you know, we're dreaming. <laughs> but is it, is it, sure. you don't make the entry unless it's uh, it, uh, the yeah, it's, sort of back left-hand corner of your mind, it's right? It's just a Gold Cup, I, I think it's wide open this year. Okay. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's a very good Gold Cup, but it's, it's not going to be, there's 27 entries in it, we're one of them. Uh, looking at a lot of them, there's a few out already. And there's a few in it that's ground dependent. And we have a lad that's improving. I know he's young and he's, he's but he wouldn't be the first novice to Coney Gree, I think one of no, us is a novice. He did, he did. Uh, and trip wise, we know he's going to get the trip and we know he loves the track. And sure, why not? So it's a it's a possibility. It's a possibility, right? Yeah. Nothing more. Still, the, the likely yeah. is the is the three mile novice. It's the brown brown okay. advisory, yeah. Okay. Uh, more than likely, but it, it, we'll just wait and see because the ground is still it's going to break up. There's a lot of minutes they're looking for good ground, and if the ground goes soft, it's wide open again, you know. Yeah, I'm starting yeah. to think. You know, I guess half of the people look at real whack has been entered for the gold cup and they go, Paddy's mad, mm. but they might just be going. Paddy's a genius. <laughs> Dep do you know what I mean? It's Depending on what rocks up, what gets the what get, what ground comes on the day. There's no genius about it. It's it's a dream, dream mm. stuff. Like to have a to have an, a, a runner in the Gold Cup. Not to mind, we don't know. Yeah. He, he, he's progressing. If he progresses and keeps, sure. So you have pubs back home, right? Yes, that's so, right. So yeah. so it's going it's got to be one of those stories. Obviously, you'll be in Cheltenham when the horse is running in whichever race he's running in. But the pubs better be full back home. Oh yeah, please God, you know that's the way it goes. But then it costs you a lot of money when you go back because you got to buy a load of drink. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everyone is uh, everyone is rooting, and uh, I mean everyone just loves Cheltenham and loves to have a winner in Cheltenham, and it's so big, it, it's unbelievable. So yeah, they do. They be rooting for me back home all the time. Sunhill Farm is home to state-of-the-art horse rehab facilities courtesy of Anne Duffield Racing. Patrick's assistant trainer, Bex Dennis, gives us a look around. I've not seen one of these before, Bex, so this is obviously quite unique here. I, I know that it's, it's not just used for racehorses, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it's so used for, for sports horses of, of all types as well. It. What are the um, benefits of doing this? We're very lucky to be able to use this. Um, part of Anne's facilities. Um, she has the sports horse rehabilitation and training etc as well. She has quite a few different trainers coming in so we have the, the use of it every day while we're here. Um, as you can see the horse is moving in different in different ways to what he would do out if he wasn't in the water. So yeah. we're building muscles and core muscles in different areas to A to prevent injury also, if they are injured, it aids in healing injuries quicker um, and to, to get fitness as well and, and in a different way. I mean, this is, this is cold water, right? It's cold water, but it's also salt water. Okay. So a lot of the treadmills you can't use salt water with. This is salt water treadmill, so it's great for the skin as well. I mean, I've seen those versions of, you know, I think a few yards have them where you've got a slightly smaller area and horses stand in, in the area with cold water yeah, over the joints. So but obviously this is a far larger it is, contraction yeah, facility. This is, yeah, this is sort of a top of the range facility. Um, and I know that a lot of trainers from over the country will come and make use of this. They do, and actually facility. it was great because the last Cheltenham meeting where we had the real worker, he won, and then I think it was the race after, Marie's Rock. Yes. She won as well. Now yes. we had, uh, Anne had Marie's Rock over, it, over the summer uh, as her rehab program and a rest and rehab. So yeah. And look had, at her now. Exactly. Oh, she's beautiful. She's, she was a real character as well. It's lovely to have her here. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, it was great to see both two horses that had done so well over the summer here in um, at Cheltenham. Yeah. Oh, it's great and winning to, as well. Yeah. I, look. 
he's clearly very happy on there, isn't he? Um, yeah. So he does about ten minutes on here. Yeah, he did ten minutes on there. Ten minutes to start off with, and then after that we go on to the. There'll be a vita floor and a solarium afterwards, which is all part of his uh, training scheme. Yeah. But when he when he hops off this, yeah, we'll go and have a look at that. Yeah, that'd be great. So solarium's on. We've gone from cold water to now heat on his back. Yes, so after the cold water, the, it's great to get them into here as a, as a bit of a cool down, really. So the heat on their back um, aids the muscles and um, the blood flow. So the Vita floor will increase blood flow, help with bone density as well, making so, stronger bones. So the heat on his back, and now we ha we, we've got it off initially, but if you can turn it on for us, yeah, the Vita floor, it it's going to sound... It's a bit noisy. Yeah, it's going to be... Um, it's, it's basically a, a giant vibrating floor, so that's going to stimulate the blood flow up through his legs. Yes, is it? that's it. Yeah, stimulates the blood flow, it aids in the recovery. Um, the I'm more just, blood that you can get to the muscles, the more oxygen comes to the muscles. I'm just looking in. I mean, it just looks like a, looks like a pretty normal floor, but um, it, yeah. I mean, what we'll do is we'll get you standing on it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll see it's not a normal floor. <laughs> no, no ex exactly. I can hear it's not yeah, just a normal yeah, floor. Yeah. So um, it, you know, obviously doesn't the obviously doesn't the world the good. Um, is this so? This for, for me in my head, it feels like this is this is rehabilitation, but it's not. This is part of for for, for, for every okay. horse here. They can just do it. Yes, you know, exactly. Weekly if we they don't like. we don't just put horses on here that are injured. No. Every horse goes on, and it's great for no. improving muscle strength, bone density, so the bones are stronger. Um, they're very well pampered here. Yeah, well, clearly, yeah. It's obviously working pretty well, yeah. isn't it? Well, here in Moulton, trainer Ruth Jefferson has another good horse on her hands in the form of Sounds Russian. And with a Gold Cup entry, owner Mary Hales and Jefferson are dreaming big. Do you sort of feel differently about him compared to other horses? Do you feel, you know, obviously he's, he's a, he's a, a 160-odd rated horse. What is he, 162 now? What 161. 161. So, like he's the star here, mm -hmm. do you, and and you know, do you, do you treat him as such? Do you feel that way about him, or do you just try and think that you know he's just another horse? He might, he might get an extra carrot. <laughs> he's do just you... another horse. You can't treat a good horse any differently because what happened and waiting patiently is a perfect example of this. I never really rode him, I never rode him out, and I had a lad riding him, and I said to him one day, I said that horse is just starting to get idle with you. You know, you need to give it a hoof in the belly, and you know make him work and he was like mm -hmm. so i put um a lad on called steve he used to be dad's head lad for 11 years and he would sometimes come in and ride out and i was like here ride ride pat out and he's like oh it's not my ride i said ride that out anyway got on typical patient he jumps off yaks away steve said come here so he got halfway up the gallop and he just dropped the bridle so steve hoofed him one and said you will bottom to top and he needed it mm. but people sometimes when they ride a good horse they don't want to ups they kind of forget that it's still just a horse and has to be ridden to do the job to the best of its ability they they sort of <laughs> say not this now, is Sam, by the way. <laughs> not now. Sam. they've been here for hours yeah um you, you've still got to sort of you can't just let it do what it wants because it's a good horse so just reflect on i suppose uh, with, with his chases he's you know kelso was a real probably moment of the the, the, the really comfortable win of, of wow and then he ran a great race at air as well yeah i mean obviously his wins came in handicap company and every time he won he had to sort of, every race fell that he stepped up in trip and I was desperate not to step him up in trip because I kind of thought he was always going to improve for a trip but the problem with it then is you don't learn anything along the way so he won by 10 16 and 22 lengths you know he'd won three races and he'd probably just dosed round in essence mm. so when he got beat by Dusa, I was a little bit gutted to get beat but I actually felt it improved and he'd learnt something and do so had a reasonable level of farm that you kind of thought, yeah, look, this could be a nice horse. Finished the season on 150. Now, we've all been there, you've had a nice horse that's rated 150 and you come into the next season and they get stuffed. <laughs> you know, left, right and centre and you're like, oh God, this horse isn't. When he won at Kelso, it showed that he'd maintained that level of ability and he was going to at least be that 150 horse. Mm. Um, he went to Aintree. The only thing I felt about Aintree, once you get into that next level, it becomes a little bit more tactical. So a handicap, it tends to be that something will go off fast and then something else will pick it up with a lower weight, you know, and it tends to be more of an end-to-end -end gallop, and he's an end-to-end -end galloper. 
once you get into them tactical races, he maybe just lacks that tactical turn of foot. And then the Roland Merrick tells you, well, hang on, God, no, we've, we've got a, he is a, a seriously good horse. He's now rated 161. He tried to give weight to a clearly well handicapped horse. But maybe again, well, for all it didn't quite work out in the race, certainly not turning in, maybe the handicap, the nature of the handicap suited him better. Yeah, they set off very fast. Um, there was a lot of front running horses in that race, not ridden by front running jockeys. Does that make sense? So yeah. you sometimes get a front running horse that's run by a jockey that likes to go hard from the front. You think this is going to be a gallop. Um, and Weatherby wasn't like that. So they set off fast, slowed it down the bend, um, sort of travelled away. Just down the back, maybe couldn't get out when he needed to. And then I don't, everywhere when he got murdered round the bend and knocked off course. So to finish the way he did was testament a to his ability and b his attitude when you finish second i guess you naturally there is some disappointment there there has to be because you've got close but you haven't quite won but what what was the overriding feeling from weatherby well i think he ran a great race um i think he unfortunately there's all sorts of reasons and i really wouldn't attribute it to anything in particular but basically he just didn't come round the bottom corner the way he should have mm. and um, he lost a huge amount of ground and um, so I thought actually you you're really the rightful winner if you know things had gone according to plan but look it didn't that's racing mm. it's that's just one of the things you have to to, to put up with so um, yeah, that was my reaction. Um, but I mean, he, he, he still was giving fifteen pounds to the to the winner, and he was only half a length behind. So I thought actually it was a, he ran a fantastically good race. Where would you like to end up with with Bruce? Um, safe and sound, yes. for one thing. Um, but if he runs well um, at Cheltenham. I would love to think he was good enough um, to go um, in one of the races at the festival. Mm. But um, next week will tell us quite a lot more about him and obviously Ruth will have a view about that. Say he won the Cotswold Chase and went up to 165. Yeah, I could run him in a handicap, but the next horse is most likely to be 158. So you're not giving away three pound, are you? You're giving away 10. Mm. So do you give away £10 to a handicap in Cheltenham? You'd probably struggle. No, you might not, but the English have a better record in the Ultima than anything else. Yeah, but... So, you know, that'll be the obvious race, you know. But what if he won the Cotswold Chase and he went up to 165, 166, then he really has to line up in a Gold Cup. Mm. I think the Irish should have more strength in depth, but that's just life. And you didn't give him a Ryanair entry just because that's always going to be too short. He's a three mile plus horse all the way. I think the further he goes, the better he goes. Okay. So. Um, or would his sort of national days be, given his rating now, just a, a was that ever a possibility in your mind? I, um, as his career's progressed, and it, look, it's progressed quite rapidly in, for his age, you know, didn't run until he was six, he's now eight. You start to look more and more like the further he goes, the better he goes. Mm. Um, so a national would be something, but um, the owners didn't want to try it this year. Okay. You have to have your owners on board for a national. Well, I've met Mary. You've got, you know, you, she's on yeah, board. Yeah, she wasn't on board for a national. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not this year. <laughs> um, she goes way back with you, doesn't she? Yeah, Mary's been with us a while, um, and she's always been quite supportive. I suppose when if I was going to lose money on Bruce. It was someone who yeah. you knew wasn't going to lift, shoplift him <laughs> and send him somewhere else. <laughs> if I was going to lose money, at least I lost it to someone who would keep it with me. About 30 minutes down the road from Ruth's is home to the horse that beat Sounds Russian last time at Weatherby. That horse is into overdrive, trained by Mark Walford, just outside of York, here in Sheriff Hutton. He's very straightforward in most ways. Um, but Will, who's my assistant, he rides him out every day, uh, takes him out on his own. We take him away from the string because we just found we were riding him with the string and he was just overdoing it at home completely. He was getting really, really keen um, and he just wouldn't have been able to see out the season doing so much on, on the gallops. So, say, so Will takes him out generally on an afternoon, just on his own when it's all quiet. He does his work there 
and um, yeah, it, it works really well. So we're not going to be changing that. No, because it, it it looks like he's if you look at his you know his record, he looks like a horse that takes his racing really well. But maybe that wouldn't be the case if you if no, you took him out with the rest of the street. No, he wouldn't definitely not. I mean. Uh, if if he did what what he does when he goes out with a string every day of the week, he would have no horse left by this oh. stage of the season. So you said to me, I think when we were just watching him there with, with Will, just at the end of it, he you said he, he's getting a bit gassy now. Is that he has yeah, that in him? He he does. He's just very very keen going. That's the only quirk with him. Um, apart from that, is 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 fairly easy. Hmm. Um, so we saw that a bit in the rehearsal. Um, not so much at Weatherby. No, I was surprised, to be honest, when we were watching the rehearsal, I was thinking he's running with a choke out here, there's no way he's going to get home. Um, and then he started to drop back into the straight and I thought, oh, that'll be him done. And I wasn't expecting him to finish well. Um, but to his credit, he really battled on that day. Um, and I think you can mark the performance up a touch because he was so, so free in the first half of the race. Weatherby, he was absolutely fine, um, settled, uh, everything went quite nicely. And, he was, he was tough at the end. Did you change anything from Newcastle to Weatherby because of how he was in the rehearsal early on? Uh, not really. Uh, I just lined him up to get a good start, a nice position. And uh, he probably wasn't really, for some reason, wasn't as keen as he was at Newcastle at Weatherby. Um, so you, you sort of knew, did you, early on in the race, you thought, yeah, this is, this is better? Yeah, he was nice and fairly relaxed throughout the race. He didn't um, jump off and latch onto the bridle like he had done at Newcastle. So I, I, was fairly, um, I was fairly happy from an early stage. I got him into a good rhythm, jumped well, and uh, yeah, um, the race, to be fair, the race worked out how I planned it in my head. Okay, who gives Jamie the instructions then? He gives his own instructions. <laughs> I, li I don't. Me, uh, Wendy, his mum, and Michael, his dad. We don't get. We don't interfere. He knows the horse. Uh, he's ridden him plenty. It, you know, I'd, I'd hope at this stage Jamie would know how to ride him better than me. So I leave it to him. And what's it like riding for your folks? Like, is it, is it a, well, particularly on a horse? Where you know, the, I guess there's more pressure because of the nature of the races he's riding in. Is it, a, is it a pleasant experience? Do you feel a bit more pressure yourself or not? Uh, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't. It probably is a little bit more um, more pressure now, obviously because he's been so progressive and he's starting to run in uh, bigger and better races. So that for me is probably you know a bit more pressure, but it's uh, it's good pressure and uh, no, I'm really enjoying it. What was Boxing Day like? Boxing Day was a good day. It was a busy day. I had a good few rides. I had a full book of rides, so um, it all just happened uh, so quickly. But it was um, no, it made it even more special. I thought it was going to be a long old day. The first two got beat. They were both second, and then I thought it was going to be one of those days. But when he went and won, it was uh, it was great. So it feels like the, the the spring or his next run and then his his first run in the spring is going to be, you know, it's going to be interesting. It's obviously going to get tougher, given his now rating. Um, Where's he going to go and where do you think he is now mark-wise, ability-wise? Um, on his mark, I think he's, he's improving, he still looks progressive. I think he beat a very good horse at, at Weatherby, went up £5 uh, off 147. I wouldn't say he's thrown in off that, but I, I still think there's a little bit of improvement in him. We'll either go for the racing post chase at Kempton or the Ultima at Cheltenham and then possibly there's a lot of water to go under the bridge at this stage, but possibly he goes to the Scottish National at the end of the season. You think he'd stay that far? You never know until um, until they've, they've done it. You're never going to train them over four miles at home. Um, we had a four-mile winner, event of Civil, one at Hexham the other day, and we got to three miles, and the owner said, do you think he'll keep going? I said, I honestly just don't know. You're in unknown territory. I think things point to the fact that he will, but you're never sure until you try it. Yeah, you, and very feasible, good ground at air that time of year. What does he want, ideally? Well, there's a lot of debate about this. I've always thought he was wanted plenty of give in the ground, uh, but his form, he hasn't really run on soft or heavy much, mm. um, but that's, we haven't been avoiding it. Uh, it's just the fact when the races were for him, we've had good ground. Um, but I think he'll, uh, soft, no problem. Possibly heavy with his exuberant way of going. Whether that'd find him out a bit, I'm not sure, but um, I wouldn't like to run him on. You know, if it got to air and it was good to firm, uh, he'd be, he'd be he'd season had finished before the race, I think.
Well, that's it for this week's This Racing Life. Had an absolute blast up in North Yorkshire. Our thanks to Paddy, to Mark, to Ruth, and good luck to them with their big race targets. We'll see you again next week. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.